Without even playing, the herd starts now. Ah, this is the herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, live in Los Angeles, iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, FS1. Joy Taylor is joining me on the show today. Good we'll, morning. We'll announce bigger news with Joy coming up soon. Don't want to give away too much early in the show. She had a great weekend. We had a great weekend. It was a great NFL Sunday. It was. So, it, was it was very exciting. Not so much for the kickers, but everyone else on oh, the field. Uh, yeah, and then we had to watch suffer through watching the Giants on TV again. Let me start with this is that yesterday was a really, 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 really bad day for one player in the NFL, and he didn't play Le'Veon Bell. Because yesterday, Blake Bortles, who is sort of a, you know, marginal uh, NFL quarterback, did not have Leonard Fournette, his star running back. And Blake Bortles dominated the current NFL dynasty, the New England Patriots. Dominated. In fact, Blake Bortles on third down, ooh, when you really need that running back, Leonard Fournette didn't even dress, wasn't in the game. And Jacksonville's offense, I don't think I've ever seen Blake Bortles, especially on third down, be that effective. By the way, Atlanta did not have Devontae Freeman, and they dropped 31 points on the best front seven, arguably, in the NFL. The Carolina Panthers. Tampa Bay doesn't have a running back that's combined in two games for 100 yards. They've scored 48 and 37 points. The Steelers scored 37 without Le'Veon Bell. Arizona's got David Johnson. He's amazing. David Johnson's amazing. Arizona can't pick up first downs. If you're Le'Veon Bell, if you're an actor, and you're like, I'm not going to work. I want a new contract. And they release the movie anyway. And he gets a 98 on Rotten Tomatoes and sells out theaters. Good luck in your contract negotiations. They don't need you. Go back to the deodorant commercials because they don't need you. The New York Giants, number two pick, Saquon Barkley. Oh, you got a bunch of catches, bunch of runs. Exciting. They can't score. <laughs> they can't score. Aaron Rodgers has no running game whatsoever and just dropped 29 against the number one defense in the NFL. Lavian Bell. That was a bad day for you. Blake Bortles has never looked that good. He was really good on third down. And New England's defense this year is good enough to win a Super Bowl. Not saying they will, but it's better than last year. The Jags had T.J. Yeldon. He was fine. He's not Leonard Fournette, but he was fine. If you look at the five leading rushers, you're not going to believe this, currently in the NFL. Let's put this list up. Matt Burita, San Francisco, undrafted. Joe Mixon, now hurt. Philip Lindsay, undrafted. Lamar Miller, his team is 0-2. James Conner is a career backup. You're you're demanding a long-term contract? I mean, I was thinking about this this morning. When is the last, and I don't even, I was just, I, I was walking to the set this morning. When is the last time that a team won a Super Bowl and it felt like they were sort of led by the running back? Denver, Terrell Davis, what is that, 30 years ago? Denver's gone through nine quarterbacks then. And by the way, that Denver team had a defense and John Elway. That was the last time I really felt like a running back was leading a team to the Super Bowl. Because John Elway, for years and years and years and years, 15 years, couldn't win a Super Bowl, would go to the Super Bowl and get blown out. Because he was, it was like Aaron Rodgers. It was too reliant on John Elway. He didn't have help. They got him a running back, Terrell Davis, and for a couple of years, they were just knocking people out. But you're sitting there, Lavian Bell, yesterday, and I and I know you want to go and do emojis. And I like Lavian Bell. He's a good kid and he's a good back. I think he could really help certain teams in this league, especially teams with young quarterbacks and bad offensive lines like the New York Jets. He could help them. He could help Buffalo that doesn't have a quarterback and they're rebuilding their offensive line. But you put him on a Pittsburgh team with Big Ben, with Antonio Brown. With Juju Smith-Schuster, with a veteran coaching staff, with two pro bowlers on the offensive line, that was a bad day for Le'Veon Bell. Because Jacksonville's offense and Blake Bortles have never, ever been that effective on third down, late in the game, beating a quality team. At 15 years old, we all make choices. You choose running back over quarterback, running back over receiver, running back over cornerback, running back over pass rusher. This is your reality. You don't mean as much. All right, let me shift to this. 
There were four games yesterday in the NFL that uh, that were just fun to watch. Kansas City, Pittsburgh, Steelers, Chiefs was crazy firework show. Uh, Minnesota, Green Bay couldn't turn it off. New England Jags went down to the end. Very entertaining. I thought Atlanta, Carolina, a lot of points, a lot of movement, a lot of stars, star quarterbacks. But the reason those eight teams in those four games were really, really good, nobody was using a backup quarterback. So this morning, everybody's freaking out in Green Bay. They're overreacting to the penalty on Clay Matthews of the Packers on a hit on Kirk Cousins. Now, first of all, it was a bang, bang play. And, of course, this was a penalty on Clay Matthews. Uh, I probably would not have called it myself. But it wasn't the hit. It was that, quote, he lifted and drove a quarterback into the ground, which is really arguable. But in Green Bay fans, I want to give you a heads up. You do realize the reason there's actually an emphasis on this in the NFL, Joy, is because um, what happened to your quarterback last year, Aaron Rodgers? That's why there is an overemphasis on this play call. Listen, the NBA, 30% of the NBA, and I'm being nice, is unwatchable, non-competitive. There's really only one team in the NFL that's unwatchable, Buffalo. Why? They don't have a quarterback. NFL football last year, ratings went down. You can tell me a million reasons why. Trump, Kaepernick, blah, blah, blah. I'll tell you one of the reasons why. We had too many good quarterbacks hurt. We had too many good quarterbacks in the NFL last year got hurt. And NFL football... Even if everybody else in the field is really, really talented, is not that much fun to watch. New York Giants are a great example when your quarterback stinks. The New York Giants have players everywhere except the one spot where they're shot. Okay, there's only one team. I mean, they're just, I mean, I mean, Arizona is losing, but Buffalo's unwatchable. They can't get the quarterback right. And I'm just, there are certain things. There are certain things I'm okay in society if we're overly cautious. I would rather have overly protective parents opposed to parents who aren't paying attention. I'm okay with overly protective parents. I hear this crowd, let them hit, let them play. All right, then um, Aaron Rodgers, you do realize, is still not 100%. If you just want to let them hit and let them play, who's the best quarterback in the NFC North? Aaron Rodgers. Who has the two best defensive fronts? Vikings, Bears. You're right, Green Bay fans. Let's just let them play and let them hit and let them drive quarterbacks into the ground. Because I watched Aaron Rodgers yesterday. He's not 100%. And you don't have a running game. And Aaron Rodgers does not audible out of sacks. And he runs around a lot. Tom Brady doesn't get hit. Aaron gets hit all the time. Yesterday, four or five times. Just taking shots. And you're complaining? You're com- Minnesota won 13 games with Case Keenum. The Bears will win seven or eight with Mitch Trubisky. You guys were the Browns last year when Aaron Rodgers got hurt. And you're complaining about that? It's like when people complain about, uh, uh, they go to the airport. And they complain about, oh, your plane is late because they're they're fixing the plane. And people are like, ah, I can't believe it. My flight is delayed. I can't believe my, my flight is delayed. And I'm like, yeah, they're getting parts. So it doesn't drop out of the sky. That's literally the only time you shouldn't be annoyed that your flight is delayed. You should literally walk up to people at an airport and go, what's wrong? Uh, We have to get some additional parts and check maintenance. Right. Thank you. (laughs) Right. That or that or flying into horrific weather. Yes. Good looking out. Yeah. We're going to change the flight plan a little to help you survive. Remain alive. (laughs) I mean, when I hear Green Bay people Complaining about the Clay Matthews hit. Yes. It's bang, bang. I wouldn't have called it, but there is an emphasis on this. Jerry Jones, the Cowboys owner, about seven, eight years ago, he went to the commissioner, Roger Goodell, and said, listen, man, our league is not nearly as good when the quarterback play is bad. So one of the reasons the the current quarterback rating in the NFL this weekend was 105.1. Why? Because we got a lot of starting quarterbacks that are upright. Do you know Aaron Rodgers' career passer rating is lower than the average quarterback rating in the NFL yesterday? This league's all offense now. It is co- You can't win just with a defense. You can't. If you could win just with a defense, the New York Jets would be a viable team to win a Super Bowl. They're not. They're going to be a 7-9 football team with a rookie quarterback throwing 19 picks. But of all the fan bases that shouldn't complain about that call, it's Green Bay's. 
There's a reason there's an emphasis. Because of your guy getting hit by Minnesota. All right. In 45 minutes, we are loaded today. Greg Jennings, Trent Dilford, David Carr from the NFL Network. Brother is Derek Carr. Had an excellent day yesterday for the Raiders. And John Gruden. Raiders weren't bad yesterday. Lost, but they were interesting. Uh, Coming up next. Baker Mayfield's coming. Coming around the bend. It's happening because Cleveland's freaking out. And I'm going to tell you why. Cleveland, take a deep breath. You're in a really good spot. All coming up. When it comes to below the belt comfort, okay, Tommy John is what I've been wearing exclusively. I was a non-underwear wearer most of my life. I know, weird. But uh, I was. I just like freedom down there. I like space. I don't like neighbors. I just want I just want a ranch house in the middle of nowhere down there. And uh, then I got Tommy John, and they don't give an F. They give three Fs. Fabric, fit, and function. They obsess over everything. Proprietary fabrics moves with you, not against you. They came out with a women's line, and about six months ago, they sold out immediately. It is now fully...